So I had my solar energy system installed in the middle of all the COVID madness, but I've had it up and running full time for over three months now. It's currently November in Michigan, and not only is the sun much lower in the sky around for less time per day, but in Michigan this time of year, it's a lot cloudier than in the summer. So I've had a lot of questions on how the system's doing. Am I still happy with it? Do I regret purchasing it? So I'm gonna give you an update on how the system is doing, how much energy it's producing, if it's still making enough energy to cover all of our needs at home, and whether I regret the purchase or not. Let's check it out. If you are interested in getting solar for yourself, check the description. I have a few referrals down there. Tesla for $100 back. Drone Quote will get you the best price that you can get. Or if you're in Michigan, neither of them serve Michigan. So check out Solar King and you can get 250 back if you get solar from them. I also have a link in the description where you can see my solar production live. Whenever you check it, that link will show you how much energy I'm producing at that time. If you check it at night, it'll be zero. Uh, but if you check it during the day, you can see how much energy I'm making at that time. And you can see my total history of all the energy I've ever made. And you can just check that out for yourself, especially if you're in Michigan, because depending on how your house is oriented, your production will be extremely similar to mine. My name is Chris, and if you end up enjoying this video, please hit like and get subscribed. So overall, uh, just right off the bat, yes, I am still incredibly happy with my solar system, and I do not regret it at all. It's doing a great job. Now, these days, it is producing less energy per day than it was back in July or August, because of course, the sun is not up as long per day. It's much lower in the sky, so you don't get as much direct sunlight on the panels. And there's a lot more clouds. We have a lot of gray days um, in October, really October all the way through maybe March or so in Michigan, just a lot of kind of gray days. One of the questions I get often is, do the panels make any energy on a cloudy day? And you can think, can you get sunburned on a cloudy day? Yeah, you can. So there is still solar energy, solar radiation coming through those clouds. And on cloudy days, of course, depending on how many clouds there are, uh, the panels do still produce energy. Now, even on really cloudy days, this is enough to cover our base load. And the base load in our house is not all that much. So on a cloudy day, we can still make up to one kilowatt, which is a lot of power, much more than most homes use for their base load. But if you have some large appliances running, like a well, charging an electric car, or an electric heater, or dryer, that's probably gonna take up most of that and probably actually a lot more. Now let's check out my last energy bill. So in Michigan, we do have net meter meaning any extra energy that I produce gets sent out of my house back to the energy company and they pay me for that and they pay me in the form of bill credits so they're never gonna actually send me cash but any extra money I have on my bill that isn't used to purchase electricity will just stay on my bill for the next month now the net metering in Michigan is a little weird in that they won't let you use your stored credits to pay for transmission fees. These are about six cents per kilowatt hour, and that's still pretty cheap if that's all you're paying for everything, um, but it can add up if you use a lot of energy or you don't have enough solar energy to cover everything you're doing. So if we look at this bill from August, we can see that I paid my energy company $30.60 for that August bill. Even though if you look higher in the bill, I had an excess generation that I got back onto my bill of $107. So even though I made way more energy than I used and I had extra money, they still made me pay them. And that's because if you look under the delivery charges, the service charge is 750, you always have to pay that. And the distribution fee is 6.6 .6 cents per kilowatt hour. So I had 292 kilowatt hours that came into my house. So that's at night or if it's really rainy. Basically, if my solar isn't covering it, then I'm paying the energy company a little bit of money to bring the energy into my house. But the actual energy is covered by those credits. Now it didn't used to be this way in Michigan and there are some people fighting to change it back. And I really hope they do because then all my credits can be used on everything that I get from the energy company um, and my bills would be zero or they'd probably still be 750. I'd have to pay that connection fee, um, but they'd be a lot closer to zero. But still $30 is a pretty good deal considering my bills before this could be anywhere from 200 to $300 per month for that residential fee. Now, because of this, I do aim to use electricity at certain times, which is no different than before. So before I had solar, we had a time of use rate. We actually still have it. Electricity is cheaper between 7 p.m. and 11 a.m. on weekdays and it's cheaper all weekend. And then it's more expensive Monday through Friday 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. So with that, we always tried to use our electricity at night. This is before we had solar. That's when the electricity was cheaper. That's when I would charge my car, try to do laundry on the weekends, stuff like that. Well, now that we have solar, it's just kind of flipped. We try to do all the energy intensive tasks while there's sun. So I aim to charge my car if it's home while the sun's out. So that charging is now completely free. If the solar is covering it, the electric company has no energy coming into my house, so I don't have to pay those distribution charges. Same thing with laundry or cooking or anything that you can kind of move around. You try to do those energy intensive things 
while the sun's out. Now, some people might go, whoa, that's annoying. You have to kind of move your schedule around. But again, we were already doing that. We already had a time of use rate, so we tried to do everything at night. We just flipped it around, so now we try to do things during the day. Now, I don't go crazy over it. If I need to charge my car at night, I just charge it. And a full 100% charge of my car would still only cost me somewhere around 4 or $5, so it's not that big of a deal. But if I was to do that every day, of course, it adds up. Now, I don't use 100% of my car's battery every day. I only use maybe 20% or so. So I'm looking at somewhere around a dollar, usually a little less than that to charge it per day if I was to charge it every day at night. Um, but when I can charge during the day, have it covered by solar, then it's a totally 100% free charge for my car. All my fuel is paid for at that point. So it's November. How much energy am I actually producing per day? Well, today was a completely sunny day. We did have a few clouds coming by, a lot less energy than we were producing in August or July. You can see we start to get some solar energy around 7.30 a.m. It peaks right around 11 a.m. and then quickly starts to drop off, whereas in the summer, I'd have this kind of long range where I was at max energy production um, for maybe an hour or half hour or something like that, and it would very slowly go down. Now, things are dropping off really quick while the sun is not very high in the sky and also doesn't stay up as long. Like I said in the introduction, I have a link in the description. You can see my solar production live or you can see all my history. I'll put that down there and you can check it out whenever you want and you can see how my house is doing, how much energy I'm making. So overall at this point, three month update, I am very happy with the purchase. Uh, my loan payments are about $300. They're actually less than that, but I pay a little extra just to kind of get it paid off faster. Um, um, and if I have energy bills that are $30 or less for most months, then I'm gonna come out ahead because my electric bills were anywhere from 250 to 300. Um, and of course, this uh, loan payment will go away eventually. If we re-amortize next year, after we get our tax credit back, our loan payment will be less than $200 a month. So our electric bills could be up to $100 a month. Of course they wouldn't, uh, but they could be $100 a month with the loan payment and it would be less than we were paying for electricity in most months anyway. Um, and then again, that loan payment is gonna disappear. So overall, a really good purchase. I am hoping that uh, some legislation passes and we can cover our distribution fees with these credits we build up. I mean, it kind of makes sense. We are helping the energy company. We are helping them with the load shifting and everything. As there's more demand during the day, we can supply that with the solar um, and I can take care of myself and do my big loads like charge my car, dry my clothes, use the stove, things like that, uh, and not have to burden the energy company. So hope you enjoyed this one. If you have any more questions about solar, please leave them below. I'd love to talk about it. Um, I wasn't sure, you know, initially if this was for me uh, but at this point a few months in I'm more than happy that I got it it's so fun to charge my car with it and just check the production of the energy and it's going straight into my car um, and it's totally free to charge my car while the sun's up and extremely cheap if I charge it at night anyway so hope you enjoyed this one if you have any questions leave them down below and you will see me in the next video so autopilot and I are happily driving along 